Hi everyone. So I realized that I haven't done a video of me doing my manicure in a while. So this is what I'm going to do today. My nails are driving me crazy. They're a complete mess. I've been working quite a bit the last few days. So I've been testing different things. So obviously the polish wore off from this hand especially. Anyway, so first I'm gonna show you how I really do my nails. So I do my nails usually over my lap with the good lights um, above. So it's just, I'm comfortable that way. So first of all, I'm going to use a towel and I'm going to remove polish from my nails. So because I only have really two coats of polish, normally I remove the polish differently. I apply it on all nails and then I just remove it, but this is just one or two coats. If you're interested in the trick that I use to remove difficult nail polish, I'm going to link it below. Actually, I'm going to do this. <laughs> Why not? Here. Because here I have three coats of polish. So let's just do it this way. So when you press the pad down, it sticks to the nail polish and then you can just pull it away nice and clean. So again, give it some pressure and pull, pull it down. Nice, nice and clean. So this is going to be very, very simple. I'm just going to shape my nails and then do the cuticle detail. And I'm going to do a dry, dry manicure. No, I'm going to use a, a cuticle remover, not electric file. Very often I use electric file uh, when you see me do salon manicures, but if you take care of your nails, you really don't need to, to use it because this is how my nails look after a week. So as you can see, there is really very little to be done. When you use the urea based cream on a regular basis, there is nothing overgrown, so there is barely any work to do. Okay, so I'm going to shape my nails to like a natural, I always like to call it natural shape. So I'm going to shorten them first, as you can see straight across. And now set the file here, move towards the middle until I get a nice shape. And then I try to do the other side the same. By the way, I get so many questions, still people asking me if it's okay to file back and forth because everyone is showing um, and is talking about how to file, uh, that it's important to file one direction, but that's I guess that's like an old wife, wife's tale. You don't have to. What really matters is the grit of the file. By the way, I'm using the Erica's um, medium grit file. And the reason why I use the medium is because, I'll be honest with you, in a salon, they last for a very, very long time. And I really like using these files because they are very thin and they're very sturdy. So when they first um, are brand new, then they are quite sharp, I have to say. So then I use them mostly for pedicures. And then when they become a little bit more soft, then I use them for manicures. They're great. But if you're using them for yourself, you can buy the fine. And I find that the textured one is better. The fine um, smooth is a little bit too smooth for me. So I like to keep my nails clean because I clean. I like to keep my nails short because I work with my hands a lot. So I just, I don't like working with longer nails. It drives me crazy. So you see, this is the shape. So again, keeping the file nice and flat this way, shortening a little bit. So when you do your nails, uh, people ask about the clipping and if, if clipping is okay. 
Uh, yeah, I don't clip a lot because I find sometimes when people have brutal nails, it can it can crack the nail. So I prefer to file. And then if I have to shorten a lot, I just use electric file to, to shorten the nails. But if you're doing your manicures, which I really, really highly recommend doing this weekly. So having like a nice routine and doing your nails weekly. Uh, there is nothing really to do, right? There is just very, very little to do. And I actually enjoy this time to do my nails. So then I look from this angle to see. And by the way, you see this nail here is not even. I mean, none of them are really that even. So anyway, so the white part here goes higher. This, by the way, if you're curious, this is a little bruise. So this is what sometimes, it's called splinter hemorrhage. It's like a little blood vessel that broke underneath and then it's just kind of looks like a little dot. So I don't follow the white part. I just make sure that the end is even. And if you're not sure, just kind of hold the file across and see if the sides match up, right? So this one I'm going to shorten from this angle. And you know, when it comes to filing, I find, I don't think there was a right and wrong way. Everybody has their own technique and do whatever works for you. But stick to the same technique because that way uh, you develop a pattern and that's what makes the shape consistent. So again, this one, this one is a little bit uneven as well. Nails, it's absolutely normal to have uneven shaped nails. And the nails, sometimes even the length of the nail bed varies from, from one hand to the other. So this is good. If, if you're unsure, then just move the hand around and see how the shape looks. So it looks good from both angles. If you have a lot of, um, a lot, you shouldn't have a lot, but if you have a little bit of hard skin here, or you get like these hangnails, you can actually now do this with the file. Just kind of setting the file down a little bit and don't overdo this because what happens is if you overdo this, you create inflammation and inflammation causes um, more hard skin. Your body's trying to protect itself. So just a little cleanup, just so they feel nice. Again, if you're using urea, that significantly reduces these kind of hard areas. So, okay, let's do the other hand. I'm going to start with this one. to set it here I hope this video is not making you dizzy okay I was moving my legs so I'm really sorry but it's really much more comfortable I don't know why but this is how I do my nails it's just I don't know the right height the right everything Okay, so this is done. So at the end of this shaping, I'm going to run my buffer along the edges. So if they are sharp, don't worry about it yet. They're gonna get nice and smooth with the buffer. Okay, so this one now. Shortening one side to the middle. I imagine a line running down the nail. If you want, you can even use like a, um, a lip liner or something like that and draw the line. So that way you're just going to mirror the other side. So basically you're going to shape one side and then you're going to shape the other side to mirror the first one. It's easier that way sometimes. See, this one is not even too it goes up higher here but i'm gonna make the edge more even this one is all kinds of 
messy nail. You know, I have this huge bump and it's from obviously when I was a, uh, a kid from writing in school. So, um, and then obviously now I work still with my hands. I hold, you know, brushes and electric files. So this, this bump is a response to constant pressure. Um, so that's how your body responds when there is more pressure. I actually have the same thing on my foot at the, at the bottom, at the, at the back of my foot above my heel, just from wearing shoes that were too small and rubbing constantly. Okay. So yes, it's the same thing with your skin. If you are too rough to your skin, your body is going to respond with creating more hard skin. So the key is to be gentle. Have you noticed how the nails, when you just take the nail polish off, they're kind of clear? So there is polish, um, polish raises the moisture level in a nail. So they almost are kind of wet, I think that's what it is. And then if I keep the polish off for a couple hours even, the free edge becomes white. And the shape changes, which is very, very interesting. They kind of become more flat. So I really prefer how my nails look and how they are shaped when I have polish on. So now I have, my nails are very strong and they're healthy and they're good. But if your nails are not, then I suggest giving them a day without polish and doing hot oil soak or warm oil soak because that will really prevent from damage from happening and it allows the oil to with the heat to reach deeper into the the, the layers of the nail and it really really plasticizes the nail and it prevents the nail from a lot of damage so i highly recommend that if you have damaged nails but obviously we want to make sure that your nails are not damaged so then you don't need like uh, many treatments so if you are gentle to your nails then usually there is no need for fancy treatments anyway so this is done so now what i'm going to do is i just take this buffer and i just run it along the free edge like this to smooth it. Um, I have these buffers because I use them in a salon. You can use, obviously you don't have to throw it away after each use we do here in a salon, but what you can do is you can just use like a nice buffer, buy a nice buffer. The ones from OPI or from Orly are really good. I'm gonna leave a link below. And you can just reuse it and they last a very long time. So now the fun part, I'm going to use Blue Cross and I'm going to drop some in the, here in the little lid. And then I'm just going to apply it with the, um, with the Q-tip because this way, I don't know, it's more hygienic than possibly touching the, the skin with the dropper. I mean, it's not end of the world, but it's, this is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one hand at a time. And this is, sometimes I do two, but I wanna show you how I do one because this is how probably you are going to be doing this. And the reason I do one is because you don't want to be leaving this product on the skin for too long. So you wanna leave it on for about a minute, that's it. Blue Cross is very good. I really like it. It kind of gets in all the crevices. I use it for pedicures sometimes as well. Um, but because it's so amazing, because it works so well, sometimes it can work too well. So it can really, well, it does irritate the skin if it's left on the skin for too long. It's very, very alkaline and it breaks down the skin. So you want to make sure that you don't overdo it. 
and because it breaks down the skin it can also break down the nail so let's just wait for about a minute and then we can remove the the cuticle i actually forgot to show you one step so what you can do is first you can without even the cuticle remover you can push back the proximal nail fold so this is what i'm doing you can do it both ways i just found that sometimes for visual purposes it's better to show um, this way so what i do actually this is this tool this is from tweezerman i'm not sure if you can see it um i just got it recently and i really really like it anyway so this edge is pretty gentle so what you want to do is you just want to push back the living skin so now you're not pushing back the cuticle you are pushing back the the living skin the cuticle is dead the living skin is living it's a proximal nail fold i'm going to show you on this hand so you can see it a little bit better so now i'm going to take this other edge and this is how i'm going to work with it so i work with the corner but you want to make sure that you're not really like sideways digging into the nail but you're the nail guides you and this is such gentle gentle touch and this is what i'm doing you don't want to be scraping it too much you just want to the cuticle by now is very soft and you know what i've i know that a lot of people many people have ridges and i tried this tool on the ridgy nails and i can still do it so i think it's doable I'm going to use it on Mr. Soul on Life here another day. So this is done. So this has been a minute, right? So I'm going to spray the nails now. And you can actually, without using a fancy sprayer, you can just um, wash your hands if you want to. Or just dip your hands in a bowl of water. This video is all over the place, but it is what it is sometimes. Okay, so now let's do this nail. So you want to make sure that this is flat. This is so sad. I think this is my favorite part of doing nails. It's removing the cuticle. Again, be very, very gentle. You don't, this is a very, very sensitive area of the nail. And I know a lot of people are overdoing this. They are really pressing. Can you do this dry? Yes, you can. But you know, I find when the skin is stuck to the nail, sometimes it's easy to overdo it. So then it kind of, you put way too much pressure. This nail, this skin, I hurt in the past. So it always grows a little funny. I scraped this, um, this finger. I think, uh, I don't know how I did it. I think I cut it or something. But you know what? I'm not going to cut, cut the skin because if I cut it, it's going to grow back thicker. So you see, there is not a lot of cuticle here. And you can start here. Just make sure that you don't really like dig with that corner. So you can almost create sometimes like a hangnail when you're doing it this way. Okay, so now with this hand, I'm going to show you what I meant about the prox proximal nail fold and the cuticle. Okay, so this is how I'm holding the tool. And this is how I'm holding it. So just without a lot of pressure, I'm going to nudge the skin away because we don't want to be working on the proximal nail fold, which is a living skin. We want to be working on the cuticle. We want to be removing the cuticle. And the cuticle is this white stuff. Can you see this? Here. So this... And you know what? Always on the video, this looks much worse. So it looks like I have, you know, like this huge um, amount of skin here, the living skin. It's, it's not that bad, honestly. 
So now this is proximal nail fold. The white stuff is cuticle. So we're going to remove the cuticle, but we're going to um, we're going to leave the proximal nail folds because I never cut it. It's a living skin, and I just don't. I mean, everybody has their own technique. I know a lot of people cut it, and they like that look. I personally don't, but to each his own. One of my viewers called it circumcised nails, and seriously, it does look like that. So now, you can actually take this, and you see how you can get this even dry, but I find you can, sometimes people just don't know when to stop with this. So you can do it, but you have to be careful. So I'm going to grab the blue cross and put it in the cuticle. I have to say, I've, I've known about this product for years and years now, but I didn't really use it. I didn't like how watery it was. And it's just like with everything, I guess you just have to learn how to make it work. And now I absolutely love it. I find this to be much more effective than any other product. Okay, this. We call them skirts. So it's a piece of nail that when you are filing, it just kind of gets tucked in underneath. So what you can do is you can grab the buffer block and they come out when the nails are um, sprayed with water or when you wash your hands. So this is what you can do. This is how you get rid of skirts. So now there's two different schools. Some people say that you should not be removing the cuticle when the the remover is still on the on the skin. I guess especially with different removers, it's hard to see what you're doing. I can see what I'm doing, but I guess yes, it's easy to overdo it. This you see here, I picked. I'm not perfect. I have my I have my days. So when you pick it, then it becomes like really, really ugly, and then you want to pick it more, and you just have to put cream on and stop picking. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove it because I the the blue cross. I don't want it on the skin for too long. And this is how I hold it. So I do these little back and forth. So I keep it on, I keep the tool on the nail. So I don't kind of stab myself and I try to um, balance my hand somewhere. See, I'm balancing here. I'm balancing here. So I'm not, you can do this like in the air as well, but I find doing it sideways this way. That's better. Here I tend to get a little bit of callus again from here from uh, just using my, my, my hands a lot and just from holding see what else cards, from holding polishes and pens and e-files. So thick skin is usually res a response to some type of trauma. There's no pressure that I'm putting like very, I mean, I am putting pressure, but very, very little.
Now, if you have what people call overgrown cuticle, very thin, thick cuticle, if you're just starting out, if your nails are bad, watch my other video, which I'm going to link at the end of this video. And it's a new client with a lot of hard skin around her nails. And you'll see how little I actually do. I'm all about progress and not perfection. So if, you know, if you, if your hands need more love, <laughs> then it's not going to happen overnight. The improvement is go gonna be definitely visible over a few manicures. Usually it doesn't take that long. It really depends how much you, how you care for your nails. So if you, if you care for your nails, then even within three weeks, so three manicures, actually two, no, three manicures, two weeks, you will probably see a lot of difference, a lot of difference if you using the proper creams, because really it's not what you do during the manicure, it's what you do after. So now I'm going to, so if you, let's say, if you're not polishing your nails right now, this is it. You don't have to do anything more. If you are polishing your nails, sometimes there is little pieces of cuticle still left on the nail and you're going to catch this with nail polish. So now I really, I'm not a fan of buffing your nails because nails have only so many layers. If you buff it, you're just thinning out your nail. So unless your nails are extremely thick, which is very, very rare, you really don't want to remove any layers but yes we have to sometimes buff the area because we want the nail polish to go on nicely but we have to do this very very gently another thing is that buffing the nail improves the adhesion of the nail polish so if the nails are very shiny then i guess if you want to improve the wear of the polish you can buff it i'm not going to buff it because polish usually lasts decently on me the problem with nail polish is that it gets damaged from the work that i do so it's not doesn't have a time to chip really so i'm not going to do any buffing of the surface of the nail it's absolutely normal for the nail to have texture to have a little bit of ridges and it's also normal to have a lot of ridges believe it or not there is um that's a normal part of aging is ridges so just very gently you see i'm not filing like this i have the buffing block here and doing one side and the other side this is 220 grit This is very gentle. So now I have this little callus here, so I'm going to just smooth it, reduce it very, very gently. Just like that, that's it. Just having the last look, seeing if everything looks good, everything looks good. So now I'm going to wipe the nails with alcohol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean piece of, of this towel, dip it in alcohol and clean my nails. The towels have less fluffies, believe it or not, and they're great for this purpose. Squeaky clean. So I've explained the cuticle issue and the proximal nail, nail issue many times. So I'm going to link, if you're interested in the why I'm not cutting the living skin, I'm going to link a video below as well. It's a fascinating topic, at least to me. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna do the other hand. So I usually let the first hand dry for a minute or so, just so I don't mess up my other hand when I'm when I'm polishing this one. I have to say this the brush is really good. It's a little bit stiffer than the Dior, but it works very well. It looks like this is drying pretty quickly. So I'm gonna give this two minutes and then I'll apply cream and oil. Okay, this dried pretty well. And now I'm going to use oil. And after a manicure, I usually apply a little bit more oil. Throughout the day, I apply less. So just a little drop. During the day, I just put a, a drop usually on one nail and then I just kind of smear it all over the place. But especially after using the cuticle removers, you really want to make sure that you replenish all the oils. And then urea base cream. Urea is fantastic. You can actually add CeraVe. Very small amount, you know, this much. Because I already have so much oil on my hands. So I don't need more. Okay, and this is how the nails are looking in the normal light and not the very bright, harsh light that I have above the table. So as you can see, this looks good. Very nice and healthy, beautiful manicure. I honestly, absolutely, I love this look. I really, really do. So let me know what you think. Hope this video was helpful. Again, thank you so much for watching. Bye.